We are here in the Abevi podcast. Yes, sir. We are back. <laughs> You know, I had a little break. I want to stay consistent now mm-hmm. with the Bevy podcast, but we made it again. And I have a beautiful guest today. I'm really happy to have you here. You know, first, when I started this podcast, you were one of the first guys. I was like, man, I have to have him there. Damn. And here now we we're here and we've been talking for half an hour, an hour already. Bro, we're dropping <laughs> gems. We're yeah, dropping bro. gems. Dropping gems, bro. Yeah, that was dropping nice. gems. You guys missed it, but we're going to get some more. So, uh, my guest today is Semagrade Kakembo. He's a fighter from Australia. He's really good, man. I, when I trained with him and uh, had, I really have a lot of respect for you because I see your craft and I see your dedication to the sport. And I want to pick your brain a little bit, you know, and just enjoy today, bro. Be in yeah. the flow. Yeah, that's it. Be bro. in the flow, Easy. bro. Just be. Yeah, yeah, thank man, you. Just being... Thank you, thank you, man. Likewise, likewise. Like every time I come cool, here, I man. see you work. And bro, in this sport, so much of um, respect comes from people's work ethic. You know, you respect people that work, right? 100%, and then there's 100%. everything else too. But yeah, we see that. And man. in the work as well, because some people you see their work ethic and you tap them and they're like, fuck you, bro. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like they're tense, you know? And some a lot of times you train with somebody and you see their character. Yeah, you, learn you know. A lot. For some some people they are like super super itchy. Some some people are super flowy. Some people mm. are like this, and it just goes through. You know, mm. martial arts, bro, bro. You break so many barriers. You know, we just yeah, bro. You feel you feel a lot. It's like a mini universe mm. of the uh, of life. So if you have trouble structuring your game, you're probably gonna have a struggle structuring your life. Mm-hmm. And people um, fight how their personality. Like everyone knows that. Yeah, yeah. Bro. Your personality I like guess, shows in your how style. you do anything is how you do everything, mm. and it's. I guess it just clicked today <laughs> when we said, bro, first, I know, I remember we did positional rounds on the back mm-hmm. and you were such, uh, you were like, you're a featherweight and I'm a welterweight. <laughs> this guy tapped me out. I'm like, fuck this guy, bro. Who is this guy? Nah, you're it a machine, nice, bro. bro. You're, you, you, you've got nice. that, um, obviously, athleticism is there. But, bro, being in that room with um, at PGA with Ben and whatnot, it's paying off. You know, real talk, you can see that. Thank you, bro. Yeah, I think so, too. I yeah. think so too. Yeah. I see it more and more, but I think it's not only the technical side mm. that I'm working on right now. It's more the mental side. Like we did talk before, mm. it's about being able to let go, being able to just flow and be. Mm. And that's when the answers to the questions come that your opponent's going to bring. Mm. And... Yeah, that's that's just what I've been working on right now, bro. Bro, that 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 chat we had outside about just being was fucking on point, bro. On point. You know what it is? That's how, how do we put that into words? You know, it's 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 simple as it's two letters. Be. Yeah, being. It's just be. Yeah, but it's like, it, yeah, the power of that is 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 massive, and you feel it. You know those moments in the fight game when you're training, when you know your energy is just. Up. and it's not like mm-hmm. your test is just is up and you're walking around like oh, here we go. <laughs> but maybe there, that too bro <laughs> there, there's that too there is that too and if I, i'm a fan of that in as that, well. ma- in that but, moment but there's there's moments when you know your energy is just in alignment you know yeah you're like, like you're, you're where you need to be you're on point you're on, you're point. on point and you know you're, you're sharp your yeah, mind is sharp yeah. your body is ready and you're present you can go yeah yeah what is that like for you like what else do you feel in those moments bro it's like you said, it's hard to put in words because it's not it, it's not possible to find words for for feelings that are that are, mm. you know, it's just being, right? But in that moment, like 
Like when I'm on fire because I had it, I had this last week where I was uh, in sparring. I was just feeling it, and I'm like, bro, you are in the moment, and you have this. I feel like you have this autopilot, but you can also go off of the autopilot and say, okay, you can you can tweak this a little bit more. Mm-hmm. You can mm-hmm. get more kicks. You can a- change the angles more. Everything, okay, now pace more. Yeah, yeah, now yeah, yeah, shoot yeah, yeah. the takedown. Fine, and. That's the flow state, huh? That's the flow state, bro. Everything when is you, happening yeah. without anything trying to happen. You have access to all the experience, all the technique, everything. It's all there. Whatever is needed yeah. in the moment is just there. That's fucking mad. Yeah, that's bro. that's massive to tap into bro, that. Bro, it's amazing. I'd it's say like, enjoyment, like we're talking outside, might as well bring those gems in here. It's like uh, from that book, Eckhart Tolle, yes, A New Earth. The New Earth. He said there's three modes of, of being, of doing. One of them is acceptance, enjoyment, and I think enthusiasm. And I, I'd say those three things, or at least mm-hmm. one of them, is present in those moments. It's like there's complete acceptance, obviously, when you're in that state because you're not even trying to accept. You just are there, so you've fully accepted the moment. Then enjoyment. Obviously, it, enjoy, we enjoy yeah, what we do. Yeah, there's, there's fun in there. There's fun. Mm-hmm. That's, um, that's, that's, that's worth thinking about, especially now. Like this last fight... Uh, was probably the best lead up. You know, it's all about bringing your best self to the fight night. That's performance. And it's mm-hmm. like, okay, you can be a killer in the training room and all of that, but how do we bring those moments to the to the fight night? One, it's like, okay, we may not be able to. Sometimes, it's, sometimes it may just not happen. There's things maybe we're not aware of that could take us out of that state. However, knowing those things, uh, I was able to, I feel get close, create the circumstance for that in this last one. That's why I like asking people, you know, what does that what does that moment feel like for you? You know? Yeah. Being elite. It's yeah, it's just being, right? Mm. But I feel like like I always say this my my favorite part of martial arts is like the problem solving. And when I'm in there, I'm just always trying to find the solution. Sometimes it's it's more of an instinctual thing. Sometimes it's more of aware. You're more aware of it, and you're more. It's more. Lo- you need longer to find the solution. For example, yesterday I had one guy. He was like, he was such a good boxer, and I couldn't get in with the. And his right hand was too quick for me. So I was like, okay, how can I find it? And then I blocked his right hand, and I just shot him off, bro. Yeah. I just shot him yeah. off in my frame. Just and trap it like, there. Just trap yeah, it bro. there. Yeah, bro. Yeah. You know? And it's like, these are the moments I live for, bro. You know? I got him. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> I swear, bro. It's, it's, I'm so passionate about Man, this shit. Man, it is so like, hard to describe those things. I, like, what, what hurts me sometimes is yeah. when it, people don't understand martial arts and i guess we're those people in other crafts you know someone that's like a yeah, master yeah. woodworker or whatnot there's things we'll never yeah, understand yeah. but at the end of the day yeah fuck it i just wish I everyone could understand mean. those so many things. people and how deep the game violence, goes yeah you know, violence, how deep but it's the game goes. so much so much more i feel like it's once i find this find the expression about martial arts that i really like a lot it's like Problem solving with mind, body, and spirit. Mm. Because obviously your mind is engaged all the time. Your body is engaged all the time. But the spiritual is like... Sometimes it's also about who wants it more, you know? Uh, if two guys are on the same level and you you just clash and you have solutions for both problems, it's like, bro, who brings more pace? Who wants it more? Who gives it more, you know? Mm. And that's also a part of, of where I think are the champions made. I think, I think one of the most important aspects to be a fighter is like who can just take more pain and push through more pain and give it all he has, you know? Who wants it more? That's yeah, energy, you know? It's like, you know, uh, we actually described it once with a couple of boys. It's like, you know when you're on the fence, you're both pushing on the fence, cage grappling, you both have that ability to turn the position and someone's going to want to win and you both want your 
offensive cage grappling position. You want their back on the fence. And there's that moment of battle and struggle. Yeah, there's strength in there, you know, who's stronger. There's mm. technique, who knows the leverage and the position. And then there's also who just fucking wants that fucking position yeah, way yeah, more. Yeah. And it's like, you got to pick and choose, I guess, sometimes when you're going to use that. But that's, that's that yeah. moment, you know. That, that's, that's the thing. It's not always like yeah, that. It's yeah. not because peep, there's people who's just like fuck it. Nah, you're not getting there. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm ending up in that position. And yeah, sometimes yeah, it, yeah. May, it may or may not work, but it's a factor. Yeah. It's a big factor. Who has that one more explosion yeah, in them? Who has yeah, that? Yeah, more? will, yeah. heart, power. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, and I think that's a that's been like a power of mine, but also uh, it was the downfall of my first loss. Because mm. I was like, I had a big break for one and a half years. And then I came back, I did my one debut, and I had like this undefeated opponent, the good striker, good grappler, everything. And I was like, I was so well repaired. I trained so hard for this fight because I knew, okay, this is my time, you know. I was co main event in Bangkok after, before Johnson Haggerty and Nong O. And Damn. I was like, yeah, bro. I was like, this Dude. is my time. Yeah, I was super yeah. confident in my training and in my preparation. And then back there, it just came to me where like I got super angry. And I was like, okay, I know I have this. I know I can push harder than him and I can get it. And I'm a good striker as well. I have good technique. But that kind of fell out of, out where i was just and out of balance out yeah i was out of balance because i was just like oh i wanted more than him yeah, i wanted yeah, more than yeah. him and i showed heart in that fight but i just forget everything i just was hustling 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 yep. hustling yep. and i just got countered you know i didn't find the solutions to the problem because the pressure got to me mm. you know that's part of the experience man this game like like life is going to give you the fucking experiences you need and some of them are hard but they're ex always exactly what you need and like how we handle loss is massive bro yeah hey, bro. this joint is a game changer oh yeah bro like i was talking about outside huh obviously i've been smoking weed for a minute and this is like <laughs> this is like a first <laughs> oh really but i've been like like i've never like my inner circle the people that i know even my family my friends like they, they know that i have a relationship with weed <laughs> What's your relationship with weed, bro? It's a love story, bro. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's just a great tool. You know, I've been out of balance with it in the past, but I'm getting there with a, with, with a good balance. Mm. Like, there are certain things that I go, yeah, this is um, absolutely mad. Yeah. But yeah, I've been, I've been bringing that. I've been kind of like working on removing that. Uh, trying to just blend whatever's in the inner circle with the fucking rest of the world, you know, slowly over time. I, th I think that's an important part of becoming strong, becoming complete as a person. Yeah, and also being comfortable with them, with yourself as a person. Yeah, bro. So, so it's an honor. Pardon? So it's an honor, mate. <laughs> honor for me, bro. So how did you use it as a tool? For meditation, I found like... Oh, yeah? For sure, I, I realized very quickly that this is a tool that can help to take you deeper into meditations, for sure. I feel like what it does, it just gives you energy and focus and that it's where that gets directed. So it can go either way, you know, but it's like mm -hmm. if you are in a good place, it's going to just elevate you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, 100%. But also it's going to bring you more down if you're down already. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like you have always, you, will, you always have the tools to take your mind where to direct your mind maybe not always you can but yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. but but it also it's a, skill. it's a skill it's a skill when you're down you know you know how it is when you're down it's not always easy to, to look up and say oh like i'm gonna get over this i'm gonna mm. this but this is part of growing right yeah like a lot, a lot like what McGregor said, the fucking spastic McGregor. What a machine he is! <laughs> but he dropped a gem. Or what he, a machine he was, bro. What was he's still a machine in his own way. Yeah. Just he's a bit obviously yeah, he's bro. a bit all over the shop. Like, but yeah. in monk mode, he dropped a gem like it was. Um, uh, 
it's easy to see all the good things, feel all the good things when everything's going right. Imagine you're on a win streak, everything's mm-hmm. happening. It's what's hard is to see all those things, feel all those things when you're not where you want to be, when you're in the when, gutter. When, when, yeah, when you're in the gutter, when you're in the trenches. Yeah, bro. If you can do that, that's where most of the power yeah, comes from. Yeah, that's where the power is. Like that. And yeah, I think that's... Tool. Pardon? This is a tool. I'd say meditation. 100%. Um, also just that like deloading. And for sure, at times I've used it to, to just numb and just kick back, yeah, you know? Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, and then there's many things this is great for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, bro. You know, I use it as a tool for... For pretty much similar st- stuff, I use it to brighten my perception. I feel like I have a different different angle to stuff when I think about stuff, mm. when I smoke weed. I have like, so like my brain starts just activating more. I feel like it activates a part of my brain where it's, where it's different, where I think about different stuff, where I'm more more it's like more part of morris you know or another part of morris Mm. because i feel like these thoughts i have are super so i identify a lot with them Mm. or what i would identify morris with because we can talk about yeah there's a self and there's no self and stuff but i think it's helping me to plan my stuff it's helping me to think about different stuff and have new ideas about stu- uh, about problems I need to solve, you know? Like and new perspectives? Yeah, new perspective, yeah. 100%, bro. Like 100%. Breaks, breaks the some patterns of thought, you know? Yeah, You're breaks patterns of thought. Yeah. You like rolling when you smoke? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Better than striking when you smoke, bro. Because yeah. there's that little bit of a, de- like yeah, a yeah, delay yeah, in your reaction you time. So even though you can be in that flow state and that's your advantage, timing and whatnot, if you're off a little bit, it's just not yeah. worth it. <laughs> and, and all, for but jiu-jitsu, all, mad. Yeah, bro, jiu-jitsu is mad, yeah. bro. I think it's also the dosage. Mm. Because a lot of times I just dose it wrong and I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm, I don't have it, you know? That's not me. And then... Yeah, smart. But when you have Experience. it right, bro, when you have like... I do edibles exactly mm-hmm. 10 milligrams. And I know, okay, like I can get some really good stuff done you know or i smoke weed and i write down i write stuff down and i'm like oh these are crazy thoughts you know crazy Mm -hmm. thoughts Mm -hmm. that i can just spit and um yeah bro it is definitely a tool bro it is definitely a tool you know what's an interesting tool i come i've come across recently i don't know if uh, i've shared it with my mates i don't know if i've put it out there but freestyling Ooh, you bro. You know, freestyle and dropping bars. I need to get it back, bro. Yeah, you were, jo- you were doing that? I was doing, bro. Yeah. I was doing it, bro. I was like, it's I used to want to be a rapper. <laughs> 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 you know? Bro, I had the crazy dreams. I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to be a rapper. Crazy. I wanted to be a football player. Yeah, what a life. That would have been. I was never thinking um, I could... I, I, wanted, I, I never wanted to do anything like average, I think. Mm. I always knew I was going to do for something, the stars. bro. Pardon? Always shoot for the stars. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Always like, yeah, bro. Why not, bro? You know what I mean? What it's else are you going to do? It's so many people have this vision where they only see this, you know? Mm. But when you look around where what's, what's up, bro, you see people that are just like you and they come from the gutter and they get somewhere. Bro, so why just can't I fuck, do that? Yeah, bro. Why not yeah. me? Yeah. Why not me, bro? Simple you know what I mean? And... That's what I thought. So, freestyling, bro. Yeah, freestyling, You want to drop some bars? Damn, that's on the spot. <laughs> Hashim, can you... Can you... Okay. Can you uh, drop a beat here? Let's can you? Go, that's gold. We yeah, don't so need to... Can, we don't need to cut it in, bro. We can cut no, it no, out. We can give it a crack, man. What's the Fuck worst thing bro. Happen? bro. We're I've already, fighters, bro. Already, We're fighters. Trust me, if you want to laugh, go on the Absolute MMA podcast called Absolutely Unnecessary Podcast. This is what got me into freestyling, yeah? Oh, yeah? I dropped some bars on the spot. They put a beat on and yeah. I dropped some hilarious, like, two-liner, <laughs> yeah. basic as bar. It was yeah, fucking yeah, hilarious. Yeah. The boys started taking the piss. And oh, then, shit. Uh, oh, here, here we go. Who's going to start? You or me? Let's go. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Damn, this is first my first freestyle. time. First freestyle in yes, the baby podcast. Okay, okay. 
Yeah, I'm here with Sam chilling. Oh yeah, yeah, and I'm yep, yeah, I'm killing the beat. Oh shit, and I'm real here with the coffee in the studio. Yeah, we're dropping our ear and we're writing and we're talking about this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn, you know, but we gotta keep that going. Okay, you gotta bro, keep I got that. the flow. A little bit I got the flow, you yeah, know? Yeah, I don't yeah, have the yeah. rhymes, but I'm flowing, bro. Let's put that beat, let's put that beat on or any beat on. That was nice beat, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's Shit, therapeutic, bro. huh? It yeah, can, bro. It can be therapeutic. But I need, I need some more. I oh. need some more. I need some more. We'll pick it up. Need some more. Okay, he needs a little bit more. Practice. A little bit less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A Life bit is a less. test. A little bit less. A little you bit see less. what yeah. we yes. do yeah. when we Best. run with the crew, and we think <laughs> we about me. And you, we are one, we having are fun, we sitting in flow, here. you know the go. Me high, Lee Chicks and me high, that's the <laughs> guy, he knows what he does when he is high. Yeah. We are yeah. chilling, yeah. we ride yeah. by. Yeah. And say Makade, what's his nose? Oh shit, and then I'm coming home. Yeah, and I'm coming home, and I got mm-hmm. the flow, and I'm on the show, right. on the show, on the grow. Oh yeah, we on the show, and this is the RB podcast, and now, now you go. I'm the bro, I can't go And just hey, like me, hey. Harley said You just need to let it go and flow And you will bro, grow bro, bro. and you should look within And understand that if you sin You are a man, it's built right into your system And this is the thing that hey. we do When we run around Sitting here, dropping sound Beep beep bada booty bada I know why Kanye did that now So hey. it's kinda good we grow We kinda hood we go Anywhere that we want to Maurice Abevi, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I can count. We out here rapping, and we go to the eleven. Yeah, seven eleven. Yeah, this is Thailand. Yeah. Hello, and welcome. And we going there. We go to the top, and we don't wanna flop. And we out here talking, and they think that was up. Hey. Okay. That was it. Hey. And we got our boy Hashim here. All right, Hashim, thank you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you need some more DJing skills. Not man. bad, huh? That was fun. Yeah, bro. First one. Yeah, that was straight off the cuff, man. Nice, bro. Easy work. That's the black genetics, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they trickle out sometimes, yeah, you know. Bro. bro, yeah. Look, so freestyling was um, I started. You know, uncomfort is a trigger for growth. Yeah. Yeah, so when bro. I sat there in that podcast, and it was funny, you know, dropping bars and taking the piss, but I was like, no, 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 that doesn't sit right with me. I was not able to drop bars on the spot. I'm like, I know I can do that. And I wasn't able to. I go, fuck that. So then I'm driving home. I smoke a little joint, you know. I put some beats on in the car, and I start freestyling. And then slowly it became easy. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. rhyming? It's easy. It's just like little barriers within yourself. You just... Got to let shit go and mm. you can start dropping bars and rhyming. Then I'm like, okay. And I, I, I'm a rookie in the game, obviously. So musicians bro. would be sitting here going like, ah, oh, yeah. yeah, like, yeah, I, bro, I, like yeah that, that's not like <laughs> really deep. Yeah, and they're like, yeah, that's early stage. But yeah, that, that's bro. early stage. And I'm like, okay, once you got past the rhyming, I just started talking. And I would just talk and somehow rhyme at the same time. And it would be like journaling. Because I'd be like, they, I would. You I, talk I would, to yourself, or you write down, or you talk to somebody. Just through the freestyle. Sometimes mm. it wouldn't even rhyme. So the beats on, I'm just talking, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm and I'm trying to talk real from the, like I'm trying ah. to I'm trying to not just rap and make sounds. I'm like where yeah. I'm at, so You're on so have forth. A meaning to it. Yes, yeah, like shit that I would identify. I, I would feel that I want to say something, and I and I would feel myself go away from that, and I'm like, nah, come right back. And that became the freestyle, and it became even harder. The bit, the bro, bars were even wow, harder, bro, and I'm like, "That's super Fuck. deep, bro. Yeah. That's crazy. I need bro, to try." And it was, it was therapeutic. It was cathartic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it f- just flows yeah, with the music yeah. together. And then it, and once you, you the break right the barrier, beat, you have the right music. You just keep going. Yeah. You just keep dropping shit. Yeah. Wow, bro. That's therapeutic, bro. Yes, yeah, so that's a tool. Music. Music is a big tool. Mm. You know, I learned. Uh, the guitar when I was mad, young. I mad. did two years guitar and then I started beatboxing. I can beatbox a little mm-hmm. bit, bro. Go drop. <laughs> oh, yeah? Let's go. <laughs> okay, okay. Beatboxing. 
Ooh. All right, let's go, let's go, yeah? let's go, let's go. <laughs> okay, okay, let's go. <laughs> bro, this is a music podcast That's now. That's it, bro, we're gonna be... <laughs> yeah, whatever, bro. No expectations. Right. Yeah, bro, fuck it. Okay. I need, to, I need a drink first. This will be interesting. Okay. That's right, yep. You know we can just run up with the cut. Wanna know about the past, not yet. Nope, that, that shit is too deep. It's a steep, steep hill. You can fall off and kill yourself, mm -hmm. but you don't wanna be doing that. So tread on the line and don't ever move whack. No, keep left, keep right. Ooh, these bars are tight. Ooh, let's talk about something else just like our life. And it's okay, up and down. Not bad. Nice, bro. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice, bro. That was nice. We're just we need going. to do that more, just yeah, like man. this, bro. Fuck. When we link up, for sure we're gonna have to be yeah, top man. of bars, bro. I'll, Yo, I like used to, fun. I used to always do this and have this legend, legendary battle, uh, freestyle battle with my friend. I knew, bro. We were like <laughs> roasting each you know, other. We had, we all, pardon? Roasting yeah, roasting each other, each other yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, but yeah. in a fun way, you know. And then we were because we were like starting to counter each other you know mm. like oh i have this no you have this you know <laughs> <laughs> and it was super funny bro it was like, like it we all like we both fight. had like a bad time in our life mm. and um it was super challenging but we just had this moment where the beat was just right and everything was right funny, and we just ah! yeah, <laughs> we, yeah you know we'll forget everything in that flow yeah bro 100 percent, bro freestyle mm. um that's also flow yeah that's yeah. When you when you also tap into flow. flow in fighting, wow, that that's yeah, oh man! If I was gonna say I was gonna live for a moment, like that, yeah, 100%. those are the moments I live for. Look, I can't even put it into words, but it's just it's like you, you're present. Yeah, you're just inside. You're not even aware that you're present. You're connected to your breath, so everything that's happening doesn't even phase you. Mm -hmm. Like whatever this guy's throwing, whatever you're even doing, you're just like there, and you're just yeah, bro. man, and you and you're still thinking, but you're not thinking. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Your body's just doing your being. You're just like bang, and that comes down to the work you put in, the reps, the the content you fed your mind with, the fucking thing. And it's like when you yeah, get bro. there, gold. Yeah, hundred percent. I think if I were to live for a moment, I could, I could always also say that, but. I feel like my life needs to have a purpose, you know? Mm. If it, like, my, it's where, it's like, I need to, I need something to be achieved in my life, you know? And obviously this moment is great for a moment, but when I look at my life and I want to say, okay, this was my life and I spend it the way I wanted it to be, you know? Because that's what we want, right? Mm. We want to spend our life the way it sh the way you you think you should do it mm. and i think i would want to also bring this moment to more people you know what i mean because I, I it's not about me you know what i mean i feel like it's not about me in this life it's about it's about bringing the people for example martial arts you know helping the other people also mm. experience this moment and give have more experiences like this and spending their life how they want them how they want their life to be you know and yeah bro that, that's, that's what that's i think that's why i think you should go train <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's good to hear bro because it's bigger picture you know a lot of it is like yeah bro like to know that it's not about you yeah is massive that 100 percent, bro but and at the same time it it's such a selfish sport yeah, hundred percent. You know, 100%. but but to know that it's not all about you, I feel you're playing the game right. I you think giving back. You sometimes you need to be selfish. There's times where you need to be selfish, where you don't give a fuck about anything because we like for. To be honest, we need to like if you want to get to a certain point, you just need to be selfish for, for at first mm. because you don't have so much because. You need to focus and achieve something. And then when you're at a point where you can give, where you're in a comfortable position, then you can give. Mm. But at first, wh what can you give if you don't have anything? You know mm. what I mean? Mm. Like, 
you can't, you know, pour from an empty cup. Yeah, you can't pour from an empty cup. Bro, you know where so I've been at recently? Yeah. It's been like, I've been running with these thoughts. Like, uh, what do I say? Um, it's on the same note, different track. Yeah, tell me. No, knowing that it's like our lives are our responsibility, but we're always going to feel, that there's going to be that feeling to impact others in a good way, you know? Mm-hmm someone close let's say you have family friends partner uh, pets whatever you know you're gonna it's about like if you see a friend in need you want to help him out yeah Yeah. you want to help him out yeah and then there's also and this is where the selfish part um comes in although i don't know i no longer think it's selfish knowing that the the best thing you can do is look out for yourself be your best self, water your garden so that you do, that way you don't throw others off track. Mm. But it's it's hard to do that and not help. So like, of course, it's natural to yeah, also yeah. help and do that. But, but you can't because do that. Because you want to water your garden. Yeah. But maybe somebody's garden is part of your garden, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and because your environment, if like, let's say, for your family is not well, then you are also you. not well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's going to hurt and you. And you, your family is going to help you as well. You know, it's like, it's always give and take. Mm-hmm. But, but it's a sacrifice, you know. It, when, yeah. you, when you give energy to others, you're sacrificing energy from yourself. 100%. And that's, but and that's I feel okay. like... That's okay. In a, yeah. in a good relationship, I feel, feel like, or in a healthy relationship, every time you give something, you get something as well. Mm. You know? It's always... It's always a trade, mm. kind of. No, like, I give input, good input to you. You give input, good input to me, and we learn from each other. Mm. That's like, that's why we are friends. You know what I mean? If we didn't have any value for each other, we we, we couldn't be fla- friends. You know what I mean? And, because and what is the point? And, and when that happens naturally, that's number one, right? When that happens naturally, yeah. it's like you're giving just to give. And the other person is just giving just to give as well. So that just naturally happens. You both end up giving. Mm-hmm. That, that's that's, uh, that's yeah, gold. Yeah, 100%. But, but really and w- not like, what, maybe what? also not expecting it right away, you know? Mm, mm. Sometimes or you even having no expectation. Yeah, having, no, having expectation, no expectation, just giving. Which is and hard to do. Yeah, but there's a balance. Balance yeah. of no expectations and just giving, giving, giving without yeah. anything... What? Coming back, you know that, what I mean? That's, you, you need to be wary of yourself. Be yeah, like, Damn, you I've been be, doing a lot of yeah. emptying, not a lot of filling, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I kind of yeah. want to get that point out there. It's like... Say again. I, I kind of want to get that point out there. That's been on my mind, you know? You mean no, that... Knowing that everyone, yeah. like... It hurts sometimes to recognize that as much as you can still and should still try to help someone, when I'm saying help, they may or may not even be in, in any problem, you know? But... At the end of the day, their life is ultimately up to them, you know? Yeah, 100%, and bro. 100%. Yeah. You're right. Mm. I think uh, there's a time and place. Mm. There's a time and place to be helping and and giving, but there's also a time and place to be selfish. Yeah. You know? And where you, th- where you put the line, that's individual. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. I think relationships is a big part of life. Like, it's a huge part of life, you know? Because people, most people's problems come from other people. <laughs> like, you, you, where, like, you have money problems. The money comes from other people. You know what I mean? You show, you throw, you owe other people money. Or, I think. Or That's even just someone, like where someone's at, it's going to impact you. you know? Yeah. And if you have a relationship yeah. with someone, it's going to impact you regardless. Yeah, 100%. You know? um, and, um, yeah, bro. That's a big part. Oh, this joint got me high, bro. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we did well. Yeah, bro. I have a question for you. I've got time, bro. So, do you study tape? Yes. Yeah? yeah How do you yeah. study it? I watch a fight just to enjoy it. Yeah. Where I try to, 
not look at just one fighter even the fighter that i'm actually choosing to study it's just like no nah, i'm just watching enjoy this fight cool man then watch it no sound and i'll watch mm. sometimes I'll, ju- i'll watch just the one guy or i'll just watch it no sound one time but i'll keep pausing replaying mm. certain parts like i'll watch a sequence i'll watch I'll, i'll rewind it what was the footwork like yeah, yeah. rewind it what were the hands like rewind it slow it down like what are the little small feints that they're doing so mm-hmm. that's that's me studying tape like for skill acquisition yeah yeah and then sometimes just watching it in general and watching the movement like a battlefield like where they're moving yeah, who's yeah. taking position more in a low like bigger part yeah. from up yeah like bird's eye bird's eye view and a little trick that works is looking at something and then seeing everything else on the side you know having that panoramic vision so seeing Maurice but then seeing Hashim seeing the wall so on and so forth when you can watch a fight like that mm-hmm. you are able to see the whole thing you know without sound so you watch sound. the exchanges and where they are in the cage yeah and i i, I will look almost in the center of the two fighters so if the two mm. fighters are fighting here I try to look almost here and then and then let, let, let the eyes go like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just I know. Like w- what watch. kind of exchanges are happening? Yeah. Who is throwing what and you're seeing both. Why is the happening? Yeah. Yeah, you're seeing both. Yeah. yeah. That that's me studying footage. Um what about yourself? That's good. That's awesome. Mm. Pretty yeah. similar, you know, pretty similar. I try to normally I don't do it where I Can I have some coffee? Is that empty? Of course. Uh can you order? My man. Shout out <laughs> MMA guy, MMA guy cafe. This is where yeah, the studio is. Bro, just pulled up, and coffee uh, on tap, yeah, bro. water with lime, water joint with lime. on the That's table. Up, bro. Good company. We out here, man. Easy A baby podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh yeah, how I study tape. Mm. It's the same thing, but normally I just study one guy. Mm-hmm. For example, I study because it's super hard. Like pe- like good fighters, they they kind of match each other out. They kind of nullify each other's game more where they like a lot of times it looks like it's two more average fighter than they are or they can't shine in a certain aspect of their game as much. So, for example, I watch like fighters where they have like an opponent where they have like comfortable wins. So their uh, their their game shines out more so you can see more of their game a more bigger part of it because when you have a guy that's making you tired and you have a guy that's making you work and it's like super dangerous you can't work as much as on your whole game as you are with when you're more comfortable your full capacity you, yeah you, can is, shine out yeah, more you yeah. know what i mean so that's why i watch Styles, like one yeah style yeah 100%. So you see more of the style I feel like. Mm. But I want to get into it more because it's like it's a part of my development where I need to work on more. You know, that's mm. why I asked this question and I want to learn it. Let's go deep because, into the fight game now. Yeah, bro. So fighting and watching tape is super hard sometimes, mm. you know? Like because it's like so quick and a lot of times it's It's a lot of nuances, you know, that you don't see I'm on a camera, you know. Mm. So you gotta really I wanna, slow yeah. it down. So right now I wanna mm. I wanna watch more styles of uh, bigger fights, but then when I get more into it and I start structuring it more and because I also want to like tape study tape, see the combinations, see the counters, mm-hmm. see the way they're moving and stuff and then drill it on my own. Mm. and write down and start over and also watching my own tape yesterday I had Hashim in the sparring session and uh, he filmed my tape uh, he filmed my sparrings and when you watch it again it's much it's so illuminating for your game because it's like it's it's all, it's another part of tape study like watching yourself fight because you see all your mistakes and you see all your your shortcomings You know, and, and, and how you adapt. To, have to be objective and, and take the emotion. Yeah, and that's hard. Yeah, that's not it's, easy. Yeah, we all, yeah, <laughs> we, we run that. Especially 100%. when it's like a even good fight because it's you'll admire yourself. The ego's like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then the, and the bad fights, it's 
you then just yeah, yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah then you yeah you need yeah. to be objective 100 percent. now you just where are pragmatic. you at as a fighter let's break ourselves down as a fighter as much as we would like to mm-hmm. like where are you at what's your skill set um, as i'm saying this i'm thinking about future opponents yeah I'm yeah. Like, yeah yeah you know fuck these guys you know <laughs> <laughs> but let's give ourselves up. let's give ourselves a little overview of ourselves you know at the end of the day any good fighter that we're going to come across is going to um be aware of our skill set you know 100 percent. so what's your question happen. so who are you as a fighter give me your skill set cheers brother my skill set <laughs> so well i'm a pretty well-rounded fighter mm-hmm. so i would say in all of my games i'm comfortable i'm comfortable in the wrestling i'm comfortable in the striking and i'm comfortable on the ground but I would say I'm more of a grappling heavy person. But I like wrestling a lot and I my my style is MMA. I don't grapple like MMA like a grappler. I don't wrestle like a wrestler, but I and I don't strike like a striker. I'm a I strike like MMA fighter, I wrestle like MMA fighter, yeah, and I grapple yeah. like MMA fighter. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Because I never had a background. My background is soccer. You Same. Know? Same. Yeah? Yeah. 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 What, what position? Football. I was uh, the right defender, the outside defender. I could yeah. run fast, you know? Same, same. Run fast, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, was, I was right it's back, back right wing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes center. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah? Sometimes center. Yeah, so when I was younger, I was doing center as well. I, I wanted center more. Mm. Coach was like, yeah, yeah. You, you, you go to the, the side. Wing, you better on the right back, right wing. Yeah. Yeah, at first, when I had ambition, I when I had ambition for football, I wanted to be a football player. I was in the center as well. Mm-hmm. But then uh, it was just more a hobby and I w- didn't feel like, feel like it anymore. When I was young, I was like... Bro, how w- is it, what is it compared to fighting, you know? Whole different game, you know? Yeah, bro. It's a whole different game. But it's also... Si- similarities, bro. You know? It's, it's both an sports yeah. and it's both a state of doing... State of doing, and you can also achieve flow There's in levels. football. There's levels well. in everything. Yeah, and in football, even it's like a group dynamic. So if you flow with each other, Different. that's gonna be even greater. You know, mm. it's gonna be even like it's even greater. It's like obviously uh, MMA is like a, it's like a, not it's not a team sport, but you have a team behind you, and when you flow with these guys. It's the same like you flow in the on the football, mm. you know, on the it's football field. Different because on the football field you're literally yeah. all in the yeah in the game, like yeah, on, bro. on the pitch. And there's a phenomenon where it's like when two people flow with each other. For example, in a dance, or mm. for example, in a conversation, mm. they're both heart rates they synchronize. You sync up, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Or for example, you re- can you think about a time where you walk next to another person for example you walk with your girlfriend but you don't need to adjust your pace mm. because you just you syn- synchronize with each other and the s- the smaller person is going to walk faster and the f- bigger person is going to walk slower <laughs> naturally you know and you walk or even w- you c- you, ne- you can see it when you when you flow with some mm. you walk with somebody and you flow in the conversations you're going to have the right st- the same steps at the gena- at the exact yeah. the same time and that's just the crazy phenomenon that we have, you know. And yeah. if you can flow with each other, shows you that's how important also co- that, that co- connection is. Yeah, bro. You know. Yeah, but human connection. Yeah. To go back to the skill set, so that's you. You're well-rounded mm. fighter. Once you're done, I'll tell you what I what yeah, I yeah, see yeah. you because we did the place by ah, the, the skill drills. Set. Oh yeah. And, and we did and we grappled as well. So yeah, bro. I'll, I'll give you like my overview. So I'll t- yeah. Um, and vice versa, I would yeah. like. Yeah. So well, let's say like a lot. All my skill sets are similar on a similar level it's not where i said that my regard my wrestling is at the worst place and i'm a pga brown belt so i feel pretty comfortable everywhere and i feel like i'm good at mixing it up you know coming from the wrestling to the striking and stuff and knowing when to apply everything but obviously i'm nowhere near where i wanted to be you know where i want to be but i think with 24 and future champion, I can. You can get I'm there. at a, I'm at a ba- not a bad place. You know what you I mean? Can get there. Yeah, yeah, bro. People would. I'm on the way. I have 10 start. years. If if people could, you know, put themselves in the game and pay, 
this would be a fucking high yeah, starting point. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Hundred percent, bro. Hot stock, bro. Yeah. Hot stock. <laughs> Trust me, guys. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, bro. What, what about you? Or you have another question about my skill set? Yeah, like um, mentally, like how are you as a fighter? And then I'll give mentally, you mentally. Like, that's that's a good question. That's a really good question. So it develops, it changes with each fight. Of course, you gain experience. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I feel like mentally, I'm at a good place because I have meditation, bro. I swear, meditation helps me so hard, so much. Ever since that first loss, I got out of my emotions, and then it was a big moment where I got like. After that loss, I uh, went into like a monastery where you just meditate for 10 days. You don't have no phone. You sleep on a you sleep on the floor, like you sleep on concrete, and you just meditate for 10 hours every day. And that was like my coming into the present moment. You know what I mean? Coming into the present moment and seeing the value of it, because. You're always in the now, and if you're in the now, you can't worry about what's happening later, you know? And that's why it helps to let go of the outcome when you're in there and just flow and be yourself, you know? And that's what um, I've been learning in the, in the last two years in my career, and I'm still learning and still working on it to let go of the outcome. Was that a, Through was that mindfulness and meditation, you know? Yeah, was that... that, that man, mindfulness is a whole... It, martial arts is a journey in life. Mindfulness is also a journey in yeah, life. Yeah, bro. It, it requires the same commitment and everything. Bro, was that a Vipassana retreat? It was not pa Vipassana. It was yeah. um, mindfulness meditation that's... It's uh, Anapanasati. Anapanasati. Anapanasati meditation. Yeah, bro. Yeah. In Swan Mok, in Phuket. Mm. It was, it's like, what is it, like four hours with the bus from here, from Phuket. Uh, remind me, next time I'm here, I'll go. We can do it together, bro. Yeah. Next, I want to do one every year. I'm yeah. going to do, uh, it was my second one. This year was my second one. Mm -hmm. And next year, I'm going to do it again. Done. Yeah, bro. Done. If you want to go, bro, we'll do it. I mean, bro, I've been, that, that's actually a goal for the year. So I'll have to do it regardless. I'm planning on <laughs> oh, really? Australia. Yeah. But bro, if not, that could be the reason to come back. I did mine for this year already, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do another one. It's a, it's a, more, a bit more of a it's, mission than we It's expect, really, yeah? it's challenging, bro. Yeah, it's challenging. Of course. Damn, damn. I've got a friend, Bobby. Uh, you you met Bobby. Yeah, Bobby, bro. Bobby, Bobby Sandu. We talk about, yeah, bro. Shout out Bobby Sandu. Bobby, my man. I'm going to get him on a podcast also. <laughs> yeah, Next time he's here, bro. Or when I'm, I'm, I'm with him. Man, okay. I'll come back to the um, skill set thing, but I'll, yeah. we'll go down meditation. Like, Okay. I came across it as well through Bobby, kind of, to be honest. We were chilling, and I had met this guy, you know, through um, jujitsu, mm. and he's talking about meditation. And before that, I had researched on my own when I was like, I went through this phase of like player one, looking at yourself and yeah, leveling yeah. up. I must have been 17, 18. So when you met Bobby, when did Bobby tell you about meditation? Bobby, that was actually around 20, I'd say 21. Maybe. You were 21? Yeah. Okay. But I, I ca I'm, I'll tell you how I came across it on my own before that. Doing mm. this research and it says like, I, I looked at my flaws. It was like focus. Obviously, you can't focus. Like, that was very clear to me. So meditation yeah. was something that said it improved your focus. So I looked at it, never committed to it. Tried mm. it. Well, I said, what is this bullshit? Yeah. Move yeah. on. It know? takes time. It yeah, takes a lot of time. And then ran into Bobby. I also ran into a bloke, Dan, Daniel Herbertson at Absolute MMA. Like a good guy. And... Got a good, you know, download inf info on what this really is about, and I'm glad I was able to take it in, gave mm. it a crack. So what yeah, was it, it was it that convinced you to actually commit to it? The way Dan described it uh, was very practical and very open, which was good, and it was cl it was clearly experienced. He wasn't it was didn't look like he was talking shit, you know. Mm. And then Bobby him doing it and I'm having like a natural like competitiveness with him I'm like well this can't still it <laughs> I'm like this can't still it bro that's amazing yeah. bro 
I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it as well. I'm like, I'll do it as well. So I did it, yeah. and then I committed to the 30 day thing. Mm. And then 14, 15 days in, I was like, oh, there's something here, man. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. kept it going. But yeah, it's a lot of times I get where like before meditation, I was like getting angry at something and not being able to get out of it, you know. But then I started meditation and I was like, I'm angry right now. Why should I be angry about this? You know what I mean? A lot of people, they have emotions where they're, that are not, first of all, they're not needed and not appropriate. And second of all, they're not bringing you to somewhere. You know, they're just destructive, you know. And people are sometimes just involved, too much involved in this emotion and they can't get out of, they can't look at themselves from a bird's eye view. Like, where, 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 what situation am I really in? Mm. Because they, they're too much into the, la, into the emotion, you know? They're too much involved. They're captured by it. They're captured by it, yeah. And that's what meditation brings you to, to you. It brings you more of a space, of a space yeah. Let, let's you see the bigger picture, kind of. Now, skills-wise. Yes, bro. So, skills. did you go over mental? Did you go over the mental? Yeah, you said that's where we got yes. the meditation. So, this is what I see. Because we did that um, grappling with you. I'm like, well, obviously, this guy, you say you're not a grappler, but I'm like, yeah, he, he, he can grapple. But you have yeah. a very MMA-style grappling. And it's, um, I just get the feeling, just through experience, I know when I grapple with you, that you can be opportunistic. If, there, if there's a window to escape or improve position, you can pounce on it. Yeah. Um, and like we said earlier, like you're hungry, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're bro. going for it. You're going for it. Yeah, bro. And then, and the striking, Debate. that was interesting when we stri- when we did the striking drills. Um, and we just... When we play sparring, you mean? Yeah, so we did play sparring and then yeah. striking drills, even some pads and stuff. Yeah, so yeah, the play yeah. sparring, I was like, obviously you're a bigger guy. And I'm mm, like... Yeah, true. You know, you you were controlling your power and whatnot. We're just playing around, which was good because it made it only the fucking technique, you know, mm. only, only yeah, where bro. we're at in that. And I was like, you are free. You're free on the feet. Mm. Would you say unorthodox? I call it unorthodox, but I see some basics in there and fundamentals. 100%. Which are obviously well, I obviously so I, I think so too. But I'd say, yeah, a little, like a little unorthodox. Yeah, yeah. So you can do different things from different positions. I would took for for example off of that position yeah the, sh- the like the I'll, Philly I'll, shell kind yeah, of stuff i've started dropping that as well yeah, yeah. <laughs> bro that's amazing bro there's a bro, moment it gets, for it. there's it a pocket it, for yeah, it. yeah there's a pocket it gets for it. people off guard mm. because they see a lot it's it's the same thing like the sidekick is the same thing mm. like for example if you're in an open stance like orthodox orthodox and southpaw one guy also wants the outside position right mm. and they think they're safe there but if I throw my sidekick, bro, they're like, what the fuck, bro? You know what I mean? They don't expect it. You don't see it so much because, like, those uh, weapons outside are harder to get. Normally, we also, also want to, like, um, we always want to be in front of the person, right? We don't want to have nobody next to us when we're fighting and they're looking at us but you because they're be exposed there. to, yeah, but I can get to the yeah. thing like this or, like, with the sidekick. Mm. Now, yeah. how do you see, and you can take a moment, how do you see striking? Mm. How do you, how do Ooh, you picture, that's deep, bro. how do you picture striking? That's deep, bro. Bro, it's like I'm in your podcast. <laughs> 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 Fuck. And I, I'll, I'll answer these questions as well. I can even, yeah, bro. I, I can Tell even, me about your skill yeah, set yeah, first. Okay. So, um, my skill set, I'm a mixed martial artist for sure. My strengths yeah. are on the feet and on the ground and the in-between spaces are where I have leveled up. The in-between spaces is where you leveled yeah, up. Yeah, because there's on the feet then there's on the ground and then there's, you know, closing the gap and then there's that feet, middle, mid-range and all that. That's where... The elbows in the clinch. Yep, yep. And then if you take a step back, you've got your, your, your boxing, your mid-range mm. boxing. And even the elbows can be used from there if you step in, so on and so forth. Yeah. That's the stuff I've fallen in love with. But, and what I started with was purely the striking at distance and the, um, and the grappling, submission grappling on the ground. I fucking 
love a mm. good submission. So there's th- that's that. Yeah, yeah. I'd say right now my game is great footwork, good solid fundamentals in terms of the mechanisms and the way I throw the shots mm. and... Yeah, that's right now it that's it so how did you how do you train the elbows like how do you train the input in the in between sequences so one there's like learning the technique so picking Mm. the technique okay we're we're going with the lead elbow yeah bang so we get the technique right for example the lead elbow from the boxing distance yeah yeah so i'll start with the if i'm going specific then i'll make it specific i'll Mm. get that range but uh, I'm working just lead elbow. I'll start with lead elbow, get the technique right, shadow boxing. Once it's done, proper shadow boxing, and you can get feedback from coaches, from film. This is at if you're doing it at an elite level, which I don't always do, but, mm. but, I sh- but mm-hmm, I'm mm-hmm. capable of doing. I do it a lot for other techniques. But it's like okay, there's that, and then there's um, repping it out on the bag, getting the technique right and the impact right, yeah, and the footwork right, and the distance a little bit because you mm. can move with the bag and kind of time it. But really getting the distance and the timing is on the pads. Mm. And with a good pad holder, someone that knows your style. Because you yeah, can work, yeah. okay, cool. And then... And you have the same distance and you have the mimic, you feeling it. of the sparring. You can mimic it. It gets closer to the real thing. Bang, he'll bounce out the way. Or you wait there, moving, moving. Wait for him to walk in. Boom. Mm. Wait for him to step back. You step in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after that, it's putting on the elbow pads. You know, proper mm. elbow pads. Sometimes I put on that little sock that they put on. Ah, the elbow. That's, <laughs> that's nothing. <laughs> People it. still get caught yeah, with this yeah, shit. Yeah. Everyone, always, even when I respire in new gyms, they're like, "Oh, what's that?" I go, "Don't matter." Don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> go, I'm gonna pull it. I'm bro, gonna pull those are weapons, bro. Yeah, I'm gonna pull it. I'm gonna Undercover pull it. weapons. <laughs> but yeah, really, bro. get the fat elbow pads. Like yeah, the, yeah, yeah. You know, the, the one that. Yeah, that yeah one, the big ones. One. And Those then, are nice to spar. And then, and I love then them. Drill it, drill it with low, like just drill it in general. Mm. Then try to apply it on lower level guys. Then try yeah. and apply it on high level guys. And there's no order to this, but that's yeah, the ideal. Like you can do it. You can just jump in and fucking just start cracking over. And I also yeah. think that's a good. That, that, that's really good structure to doing it. Like mm. you start small, you p- go up and up and up and up. The shadow boxing is uh, underrated. Massive. Yeah, bro. Saddle boxing is massively underrated, bro. Massively, it, it is Thank a you, bro. Tool. That was that's good. It is it is one of the best because tools for development. Yeah. Because you can get the footwork right, the balance Foot, right, and you do it over and over right. and yes. over and over and yes. over again, and it's low impact. Yeah, nothing. Like no matter how injured you are, you can normally you can always shadow box, mm. bro. And you like, can turn your maybe, eyes on. Uh, pardon? You can turn your eyes on. Turn your eyes on, and even if like. Your legs are fucked. You can still s- mm-hmm. you can still sit and mm-hmm. be there and do the moti- do the do the movements. You know, shadow boxing can be fun, enjoyable, playful, mm. good yeah. workout with high reward, and it can also be directed, specific, yeah, deliberate practice, purposeful practice. Hundred percent. It's really big. Yeah. It's really big. But I think a lot of people always fuck it, also fuck it up. You know, because the. How many fighters did you see where they're like, they're just here, da, 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 you know, they don't think. They just do some just combinations, it's like you know. like dancing almost. Yeah, pardon? It's like dancing, you're just shaking. Yeah, you, no, no, no. I mean, like, so many fighters are not the shadow focused, focused, focused in their, in their striking, you know. Yeah, they, don't, yeah. they don't have a purpose for it. They don't say, okay... I'm just going to use my jab now. Or they don't visualize a, an opponent in front of them. Mm. They just, I don't know, they think about whatever b- pussy they got yesterday and they, <laughs> they just kind of like move, you know? Yep, yep. That's and they let their hands down and stuff. So if you mm. do it, be aware and be mm. focused in doing it, you know? And if be, you're like not you, be focused, you know? then be completely free but choose to be. So I'm just going to flow and let things happen. Yeah. But my mind still has to be focused on flow. Yeah, yeah. And flow doing flow. the movements, right? Yeah, because some movements. people, they're poor sloppy. Habits. You know what? Poor habits. Yeah, bro. That's what I mean. You get poor habits with it, you know? You're building your baseline. You're building your baseline when you shadow box. Mm. How do I move when yeah. I'm in the cage and we're not yeah. in contact? Yeah, yeah, what yeah. do you want that baseline to be? Do what you want Or to what's be your... Can sloppy? you close? Get closer to the mic? Yeah. What do you want that baseline to be? Do you want it to be sloppy? Yeah. Do you want it to be... Uh, yeah. have holes or do you want it to be yeah. crisp do you want it to be sharp yeah it's but also like how is your autopilot when mm. you're tired or hurt 
Did you ever had a fight where you were like, oh, I don't remember these rounds anymore? No, no. No? I've, I've had a fight where I've had definite concussion. Um, I remembered it. I remembered. You remember everything? Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's good, bro. I yeah. think that's good because like, I never, I also never had that fight because, uh, but I, I see like how other fighters talk about it and they were like, man, I got dropped in the second round and I just can't remember anything for the next two rounds, you know, till I watched the fight. And yeah, it's I rough. think how you, how you are in these rounds, that's your autopilot, mm. you know? When you when you're just like out of it, kind of, you know, just just kind of surviving, you know, mm. because you got dropped and you're like, it's like a fight to the death, you know, like fighting. You can't simulate it in sparring. That's why you can't simulate it in sparring because it's it's so different. You don't bring it's a that big venom into. The, yeah, it's yeah. like a real fight to the death, you mm. know, and you that's hard to to uh, simulate. Mm. And when you're in there and you're hurt and you're you're fucking just surviving. That's when your autopilot is. So that's why shadow boxing is so important, guys. Shadow box more. Number one. In terms of like drilling, I think what's also good to add to this is you were talking about going from doing it on shadow boxing, doing it on the back, doing it on the pads, doing it on drills, doing it in sparring. I think. Between those, there's like a huge middle ground of sparring and drilling. You. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yep, yep. Because you can drill, you can see other kickboxers who drill together. Mm. They do one combination, the other guy holds together. They do another combination, the other guy does the combination. Mm. And mm. a lot of dash kickboxing is, for example, just one guy shoving <laughs> the one. other guy bah, with the one combination. They're just he drilling waits, at a high pace. Yeah, he waits and then the other guy goes. And it's like a, it's like a fight, you know? And mm. in drilling, you do the same. So you can, for example, drill something, but the other guy throws a jab, right? He throws a jab and you, st sl you slip and counter, for example. But the other guy, he can do it in a, in a rhythm, but he can do it without rhythm. So he tries to get you. So now you have this added added uh, difficulty of the timing, you know, right? Because normally in a fight, you don't see it. But if you see it, it's easier. But then you got get the timing. You're more under stress. So you can make it under a more stressful environment. Mm -hmm. Then you have both hands, you know? Then you can add more, get more layers, layer, layer to it. And then... Getting, th that's a getting the direct feedback. Like yeah. someone's holding pads yeah, for you. Yeah give you reactions so you don't get used yeah, to just sitting 100%. comfortable because the where you learn is where you're challenged but not over challenged mm. and you're also comfortable in the situation you're not that you're not bored like right in the middle of challenge bored and difficulty and skill set mm. there's uh there's play sparring yes bro which is play sparring that's exactly one of the the best tools for bridging the gap between getting the skill that you've now acquired and then being able to do it live. Mm. But you need to do it with guys that you trust that yeah. can actually play spa, not yeah. dickheads that are going to, you accidentally catch someone, next minute they're throwing a hectic yeah, one at yeah, you. Yeah. It's like you want to be... You want to know that you're play sparring. Bro. Yes, and it's like the whole point is, yes, we're going to get caught, but it's going to be like a tap. Yeah. It's going to be something that's like, oop, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. there. So you, you get to it. try all your technique and get over the the fear of the repercussion of getting mm. smacked. And it's like, boom, okay, there was a mm. light one. Now I know, okay, cool. And they get that chance to, like getting good guys that you trust that you can play spar with and then not falling in love with play sparring and forgetting <laughs> that in an actual fight, people yeah, aren't yeah, playing yeah. around with True, you. Bro. That you need that hard sparring heart. as well, yeah, you, you know, real sparring. punches. Yeah, you need guys that are going to come at yeah, you. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. But then once you get to a level in the technique that you want to learn, you're going to do it in harder sparring. Mm. But I feel like where we're at, there's the next level is, is, is inbound. Like I for sure feel the level up. I, f I feel like you're there as well. But there's like all the physical work, the hard work and stuff. But mm. then understanding all this stuff about the game too and your own training and applying it. Yeah. Um, and then there's also just 
personally, there's a lot of experience coming from the fights because it's been a wide variety of experiences in the fights that are coming together and it's like, fuck, I'm really looking forward to this next stage mm. of, of, of this fight game, bro. Yeah, and 100%. You're so you mean because place. you were able to see more different styles and be able to learn from them? Yeah, and different experiences. No. Maybe not Of yourself. In, in fights as well, yeah. And in life in general, but in fights in particular, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to narrow it down, it's like, I can feel a, um, I can feel a, a combination of good things coming together, and I like it's, it's yeah, okay, man, hundred percent, okay. cool. This can this happens because that's good to know because there's a the shit times too. So the fact that, <laughs> the fact that this is happening and I'm feeling those skills and I'm like, damn, yeah, okay, bro, good. Just keep going. I go, this is mad. Keep this going and keep chasing, yeah, man. Let's see what's coming. Because let's see uh, what next. yeah, we only have so much time in this game, mm. and we need to get the best out of it. Mm. I feel like. Once we're 39 or whatever, <laughs> we don't want to. We don't want to look back and say, "Oh, I could have done this. I could have done that." You know. No, I won't be. Won't be saying that. Never. Sure. Never. Yeah. What? Well, so when I where I saw this, where I'm getting to the next level, it was actually when I realized about my training that it's all about feedback. You mm. know. So when you were training and you're seeing yourself and you're uh, you're analyzing yourself while you're training you get feedback from it and now that i have like a team from it i can always go to ben and say oh what do i do in this position i get caught in this position oh i got caught in this position you know and he always gives me an answer like this that's where i got like oh shit i can now be even quicker at being getting better you know i be I, i i got so i got better by getting better if that makes sense yeah yeah, yeah. so i got better at make getting better mm. because i now analyze myself more where i am and what techniques i need and what improvements i make because i used to just learn new stuff but not think about like actually thinking about my game watching my own tape and seeing where i need improvements and Actually, going for those improvements, I actually really need instead of just adding r random techniques. You know what I mean? Hey, so a, a book you will like, you may even know, Peak by Anders Ericsson. It's tell me book, about it. It's just a book on skill development and mm. on reaching elite levels and by studying musicians, golfers, tennis players people memorizing numbers and then looking at what are the similarities in the people that reach the top, top, top 10%. You don't even need to read the book. Yeah, you can yeah, just yeah. even suss the, the, the summary. summary and it'll, it'll give you the, the, the top points you need, but it's cool shit. Bro, so who do they study? Oh, some, I believe that Mozart. Mozart. I think even one of the guys, the rest of them, I forgot. A couple golfers, a couple nice. uni students that they ran studies on. Um, it's That's where cool, the 10,000 hour rule uh was derived from it's mm. from this guy's really from work. peak yeah it's from peak and the 10,000 hour rule it's actually explained a little bit differently in the book but it's uh, overall the same thing yeah can i go back to um how you see striking oh yeah yeah how is he striking and then i also want to ask you <laughs> um improvement like what what are some things that help you improve but in yeah. general in general like or in my mma game in general and mma okay i will think let's start with striking okay, okay. <laughs> i tell my story then you tell your story done so striking okay what striking is is two people throwing their body weight against each other mm -hmm. that's essentially what striking is and then the second layer to it, there's always layers. So the second layer to it is you are trying to hit and not get hit. That's what essentially what striking is also. <laughs> That's the next explanation. So how do, we, how do we hit and not get hit? First of all, we, are, we have a distance. We have two people standing in front of each other and they're moving normally. They're moving in and out of range. 
But how do you move in and out of range? There's multiple ways. You can feint, you can just step inside, you can punch, you can change the angle and then go, go in. Then, why you go in? Where is your opening? Is there an opening or do you have to create it first? And that's also mixing into how do you close the distance? So how you close the distance can also be a setup for an open, for the final opening. So for example, I see you you're like this, okay? So many people, so many fighters are like this when they, when they feel threatened, when you put pressure, they, they come, yeah, yeah, they come here. Yeah. So I see the, the opening for the left hook. So I just, I just, for example, I, I'm outside of the distance. So I close the distance with a feint, I fake the right hook, and then I come with the left. Mm -hmm. It's that easy, bro. It's like, I, I make it super comfortable <laughs> for the super, yeah. super, I take it, you know, I try to take it out of, uh, uh, yeah, decisive every step. So I need to close the distance, I need to find the, uh, find the opening, Either I, op I do an opening through a feint, I, or I set up the opening through a feint, or I just see where you open, and I just close the distance quickly. And then also I need to go out. I can go, uh, I can go straight back, I can go left, and I can go right, but I can also go in, I can go into the clinch or into the takedown. And that's where MMA is striking, that's MMA striking. Mm. And I think that's that, and other, other than that, there's uh, cage, cage awareness, yeah. cage awareness, ring craft. Mm. So where you are in the ring, you also always need to be aware where you are in the ring. Are you against the ropes? Are you, are you getting cornered? Are you getting pressured? Are you walking backwards? When you walk backwards, you cannot like go back in a straight line. You always need to go out in a, in a straight in a on an angle because it's harder for you to get hit. <sighs> what else? Because I was thinking about this question a lot, you know? Because it's so, it's, I think it's kind of much harder than grappling where you have different positions so different. and the positions they stay, you know? Yeah. For example, if you change the angle in the, in the boxing, maybe you have the, the advantageous angle only for a split second, you know? And that's where you need to catch him or you need to s start your attack. But in grappling, everything is a little bit slower and it's easier to di dissect. Mm. How do you stay, stay striking? Yeah, yeah, Think I like that, I like striking. that. I like that, especially the, the start, which is like throwing your body weight at each other. Mm. That, that, that's, that's yeah, bro, 100%. Cool. I have yeah, a book for you, bro. Yep. It's called Championship Fighting by Jack Dempsey. Oh. You the know, man, the man, the Dempsey he's the man, bro. Damn, he wrote a book, huh? Yeah, bro. <laughs> he old, said, would be old. Pardon? He would be old, yeah. I think he's dead now. Yeah, it would he's, be old. He's dead. a champion. Yeah, bro. Like, yeah. if you don't know Jack Dempsey, go look him up. He's one of the great boxers, one of the great boxers of history. Money. Okay. I'm okay. still reading it, but it's like essentially what he said is like, if you throw a baby from the from a house, and it landed on your head it would knock you out. You know what I mean? So any, anybody's body weight... And leverage and time. Yeah, yeah, anybody's body weight has power to knock, knock you out, mm. kind of. You it's, know just, what it's the vessel. Yeah, it's the vessel, and it's how you apply your body weight and how you move your body weight in a way where you can use it. He talks all about how you put weight into the right hand. Mm. Because essentially also what it is, is your weight moving right exactly on your chin yeah. that your chin goes out <laughs> your chin moves as quick as your uh, harder than your brain and your brain bounces to the floor uh, bounces to the side of your head and that's when you get knocked out mm. and that's our goal but we it starts with the power of your body the transferring rotation. it the right way yes putting it the right way exactly to channel it on your chin and knock you out and kill you yeah. if you have to. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's our fucking sport, bro. <laughs> bro, we're doing the best sport ever, bro. <laughs> what a life, bro. What a life. What a life, bro. And what a what art. A life. What a art. What a art, bro. The sweet science, bro. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's okay. just the best ever, bro. This Go train. Go train, this, you this guys. Is, this is how I see it, right? Yeah. 
striking is one you're already in a confined space yeah okay you're in a hexagon mm -hmm. or, or an octagon or a ring so oh, that's where hex comes from yeah yeah mm. and they've even got a fucking what's it called they've got a pit a karate combat pit with sliding oh really it's interesting like karate combat you and know? they do mma in it they do mma in it so wow i need to watch that yeah so there's different there's different arenas but you've got your space did you fight in an arena like that no no i'm not i'm talking about karate combat i'm ah, just saying there's, these oh, are there's different arenas okay there's okay. different arenas yeah, and yeah yeah okay there's that the yeah, striking yeah. takes place no, in that you need to be aware of that your position because it has advantages disadvantages yeah a little bit away from the look at this perfect little octagon we got here <laughs> sure got nice here. bro yeah. i like it you have your you can be in the center yeah okay and you both have the same amount of space so on so forth as soon as someone steps somewhere the position is changed now you know somebody's over here in this little quart quartet yeah. or little triangle he has limited distance backwards this guy has more distance Mm -hmm. backwards so more exactly. options are available to him straight off the bat before yeah, you even come 100%. into contact and he can also pressure you so there's position there's space and then but he can also pressure but the guy on the fence can also pressure can also pressure and that would be a good decision if yeah <laughs> the, yeah 100%. unless you're looking to bait someone but also like if he's pressuring he cannot He's not as ready for the counter because his back is against the fence. He has limited space. Yeah, he has limited space. Has limited That's space. why it's harder to evade the counter because mm -hmm. you can move back. And you you have limited options. As an attacker on the reverse side, yeah. you know his options are very short going backwards, left and right. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of space and he may come forward at you as well. So you, that that you know, you know that when you're there. Yeah. Uh, so there's position space. That's everything about position space and being in the arena yeah. and knowing the position. And then you have your like I like that. I'm gonna run with that one now. You are throwing yeah. your body weight at someone else, and you're doing that through rotation of the body, um, usually at the core, but with depending on how you want and to the do legs. It. Yep. Yep. That all starts from the yeah. ground yeah. as well. And Footwork. You can use those strikes. They don't even have to land. They can move someone around. You kick, he moves yeah. back. Now you're manipulating yeah. him in space. You're getting him yeah, to move around. 100%. It, so on and so forth. And you need to, at the end of the day, put damage on the guy. Mm. And you need to avoid damage. 100%. Hit and not get hit. Like, hit and not get hit. You need it, but doing that against the quality opponent, more is going to get, is going to happen. More yeah, is going to be a play. Gonna happen. You're going to get catched. But it's, it's, still, it's, it's, still the, it's still the same. Yeah, the goal remains the same. Yeah. Now, that's it. Because you even if you don't look to get the finish, if you're trying to win on the scorecards, which is not a good decision. But <laughs> yeah. nowadays, it's, yeah. yeah. But some, but you have to yeah, be aware of that. You have to be yeah. aware of that so that you're still winning rounds. But if you're looking 100%. to do that, that's still gonna include damage, yeah. and it's still gonna include not being not being damaged. And yeah, that's yeah, hundred that, yeah, percent, hundred percent. But I feel yeah. like there's also different strategies because we talk about tactics a lot now <laughs> i think there's also strategy mm. so that's more the story of of the fight maybe because we are like talking about different sequences right but let's say you have this sa the the strategy <laughs> sorry the strategy to win in the later rounds maybe you have the strategy to wait for the knockout you know so you don't mind getting a couple of shots. You know, you have your shot. If you land with the right shot, you can catch him, mm. you know? And that's also a part of striking, I think. And what about ra and, 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 and range? Just quickly, like range. Range, range, each range. range has its different shots that are ideal for that range. Mm. And there are different things to yes, be aware bro. of. So is the person's ability to close distance and their footwork. 100%. But range and, and having the right shot for each range is... is, is that's that's also a big thing. Yeah. Range, big where you do, when assessment. you kick, when you punch, when you elbow, with what distance you use what. Mm. And also, what angle. Mm. That's also big. Changes, angle is changes everything. Also big. <laughs> yeah, right? So, for example, we have a orthodox... Uh, we have a southpaw and we have an orthodox. So that means that th they will have their closest leg forward so their yeah. lead leg this will be lead, in the same yeah lead leg will be in the front this is yeah. left this is left uh, this is right will be in alignment this is left this is right open stance so this guy has another has a it's another 
well, it's another angle when you're like this than when you're both orthodox. Mm -hmm. You know, you have different levels, you have different distance, different uh, angles. This here, both want to go outside, and there's different, it, there's different uh, weapons for different situations. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to show like this, bro. You need to, you need yeah, to be in yeah, here, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. You need to be on the mat. Maybe you're gonna do a video like expla explaining yeah, yeah. about fighting a little bit. Maybe fight. if somebody wants it, we can try. Yeah. Done. Yeah, bro. I was watching Sandhagen's instructional. He has an instructional series. You know, Corey Sandhagen. Shout out. I was watching his instructional and he was explaining it very well and. Thinking which about, one is this? pardon? W which instructional? It's on his. It's on his uh, website. He has a website. Yeah. Uh, I can send it to you if you want, yeah, yeah, bro. Have a yeah, bro. It's amazing, bro. I like instructionals, bro. Instructionals are amazing, especially striking because when you have striking, it shows you sometimes how to train. You know how to train and how to apply it and. Fuck, it's a hack. It's, it's yeah, it's a hack, bro. Game, yeah. It's a hack. Instructionals and studying film, I think that's a big part of learning of learning it, you know? Not only in the body, but in the mind. Because it's all in the mind. And we can't talk about the mind as well. It's like, if you see it, you can do it. And you're going to watch it. Mm. And then, you mean, but you also need to be aware of it. Of everything bro, you do. This might not be ideal for sleep. But what I've been doing and what I like doing is I'll put my phone on black and white. Mm. I'll take the sound down and then I'll go on YouTube or on Fight Pass and I'll watch a fight. And I'll watch it until I'm so tired that my eyes are like falling asleep. And, I'm <laughs> 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 and, that's, when I, and that's when I go, okay, good. Because then I, 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 yeah, I'm yeah. like, this is going into my subconscious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> bro, I'm that's like, amazing, I'm bro. Like, this is the last thing I'm seeing. And yeah, bro, yeah, yeah. It works. It works. Yeah? Like, bro, pick, bro pick I need to try it. Pick somewhere you want to improve. Like, let's say... I need to try. K1, boxing, water, yeah. whatever it is. Isolate something and just keep watching film of high-level guys applying it in the right kind of way and on the, on repeat. Yeah, slow yeah. it down, black and white, no sound. Wow. Until you get tired. Watch that shit every night as well as doing your drills. And yeah, bro. when you spar, you just start doing it. That's amazing. Yeah, it's mad. Who is that's somebody... Bro, that's bro science, but, uh, <laughs> but it's mad. Bro, you just need to believe in it, bro. Then it's going to work. Mm. No, trust me, bro. Trust me. The mind is powerful. And so who is somebody you studied recently and you took something out of their game? Shakur Stevenson. Who? Shakur Stevenson. Shakur Stevenson. Yeah, boxer. Mm. Shakur Stevenson, boxer. Ah, Shakur Stevenson, of yeah. course, yeah. Machine boxer. He's good, bro. I never study him too much, though, but t tell me about him. He's a great southpaw boxer, technical. He has good defensive ability. Mm. He goes to the body, and he's great at taking the angle with combinations. Mm. And his footwork is in line when he does this. If he's in front of you, he'll use his classic hook, cross hook, as he's taking the foot angle at, in the open stance he just talked mm. about. And it's so basic. Uh, he does it so, so, yeah, so yeah. well. And the way he throws his shots is fantastic. It's like, it, it's it's all that rotation. Yeah. And it's purely the rotation. And he's got good reactions after it. So he'll take that angle. Let's say he's southpaw. Boom, I'll do this roll on the chair. Bang, bang. <laughs> you take your angle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this person's hand is here. You yeah, walk, yeah, yeah. Walk. You're outside. Then he goes cross to the body, takes the angle again, catches, comes back. He's got the sequences down pat. He knows what he's doing in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I hope the mic caught that, but fuck, he, he's, he knows what he's doing in there. He's um, he's the man, bro. He's, he's good. champion. He's good. good control of the lead hand. And what weight is watch, he? Ooh, I don't know. He must be 145 at least. I think so. Yeah. And then there's um Terence Crawford. Terence Crawford also, yeah. bro. He's pound for pound number one, bro. Machine, Crazy. machine, different style. So well-rounded as well. Yeah, and he stands a little looser. He's, mm, you know, yeah. He stands a little looser. He moves. He great head um, head movement. Takes angles. Heart of a fucking lion. Yeah, he, he's obviously Terrence got some Crawford. fucking presence in there. Shout out Terence Crawford. And then there's Israel. 
was studying Israel. Israel recently. This is Izzy all in this Thailand man. trip. Yeah, him versus Pereira just became. Yeah, when we trained, you told me some easy yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was nice. I used it yesterday actually yeah. in sparring. Which one? Which one was this? So it's the normal. You like. The front kick first, yep. and then you fake the front kick with the hips, Great and then you just, yeah. yeah because yeah. normally when I fake it, I elevate my knee. Mm -hmm. No knee. And I elevate my knee in the front, but I don't kick it. Mm. Or I come back, and I then I punch, or I step in front, and I close the distance like that. Mm. But just moving the hip, and then the right hand is closer. Money. It's a nice one. I'm going to take this and, with and me. And the calf is, is available there. We'll, give, we'll put it the out calf. there. The calf. These people should know this already. Ah, from the fake. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you yeah. study it, bro. Yeah. And there's so many thousands of stuff we can talk about, you know, in striking yeah. and in oh. fighting. It's, it never ends, bro. It never yeah. ends, bro. We're uh, studying them and him. and. So you, you fake the front kick and you go with the calf kick. Yep. Mm. Yeah. And, man, if you, st you can step in the way where... You're also taking your angle as well, you know. Yeah, true. So you can faint, and that faint when you're dragging that hip is taking you off to that angle if you want that, or it can be taking you straight yeah. forward. Um, yeah, and then you've got your calf. You get it a little closer to the mic. Then you can get the calf, and you can also get the body. You can get the head. You can get the rear hand. Yeah, yeah. It's a great one. It's a great one. Somebody I also studied <laughs> is Naoya Inoue. From what I've said, he, he's like a more yeah bro very 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 yeah. very technical they say he's like a yeah. like a sanchai style almost yeah bro yeah, technical but style but he can turn it on as well yeah I can imagine he can he can be pretty brutal <laughs> yeah. what's his weight his weight is uh 71 71 yeah. kilo mm. 72 yeah bro he's wo he's world class bro yeah. world class and i felt it <laughs> but I hope, man we could just yeah, train bro. with that guy yeah bro all right, bro. It Hello. was an honor to have you here, man. Thank you for the beautiful conversation. Thank you for the freestyles, bro. And we'll <laughs> do it again, bro. Yes, sir. Hopefully soon yes, when sir. you're next Much time love. in Phuket. Much love. Yeah, man. Much love. We can talk about our fights and stuff. Done. Anything you want to promote, anything people can follow you, uh, that's your time now. Spot yeah. in the camera. King Kakembo on Instagram. Just shout out to my family, my loved ones, the boys I have here with me training, yourself, my gym. My whole team, everyone. They all know who they yeah, are. Man. Follow my Shout guy. Out. So that was the podcast. Thank you for watching. And uh, sell, like, subscribe. And uh, see you soon. Peace.